प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नीजे हरे कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Pujya Guruji, Pujya Santo and all the Bhaktos Jai Swami Narayan. This lecture will cover Yuva Sabha Course 6 for ages 18 to 45 in the language of English, date March 30th, 2019. From Yuvasabha Course 5, Pujya Swami covered the Vachnamrut Gridada Middle Chapter 28th, Lifeline, Compassionate Nature. And from that, Pujya Swami especially uh, focused on the topic of seva or service. Many variations, what Bhagwan likes, what he does not like, he covered in that lecture, in that sabha. But for this particular Sabha 6, going more in depth with the topic of Seva, Pujya Swami subject this lecture on how to perform Seva of Maharaj, Santo and Bhakto. So how to do it. Just like how in the world, um, anything and everything we do, there's a certain technique to it. There's a certain way to do it. In the same way, here for this particular topic of seva there is very very important notions that are to be considered when doing seva there's precautions there is also uh, various factors that should be considered while doing uh, seva and that's what we're going to cover today but to support this very subject Pujaswami took the support of the Vachnamrut Gadara Middle Chapter 41, a bone in the form of egotism. I would like to first read this Vachnamrut, it's pretty short, and then we'll continue on what Swami said and we'll analyze it throughout. Swami Narayan Hare, on Kartik Vadi 11, Samat 1880, American date, November 28, 1823, Swami Sri Sajanji Maharaj was sitting on a large decorated cot on the veranda outside the west-facing rooms of Dada Khachar's Darbar in Gadada. He was dressed entirely in white clothes. He was wearing garlands of yellow flowers around his neck, and tassels of yellow flowers had been inserted in his bag. At that time, an assembly of munis as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him. Now, Bhagwan is going to state what uh, the principle that he wants to tell everyone, share everyone. Out of compassion, Sriji Maharaj then began to preach to his devotees, saying, When a person who wishes to worship God receives an opp opportunity to serve God and his devotees, he should serve them considering it to be his extreme, extremely great fortune. Moreover, he should do so only with bhakti, for the sake of pleasing God and for his own liberation, not for the sake of receiving praise from others. The nature of a person, however, is such that he only enjoys doing that which satisfies his vanity or ego. Without that, he does not enjoy performing even bhakti of God. For example, a dog takes a dry bone to an isolated place to chew on. As a result of the chewing, its mouth is abraded and the bone becomes covered in blood. Then licking the bone, the dog becomes overjoyed. But little does the fool realize that the taste that I am enjoying is that of blood from my own mouth. In the same way, even 
In the same way, even a devotee of God is unable to forsake the bone in the form of egotism. In fact, all of the spiritual endeavors he performs are governed by vanity. They are not performed by the sole purpose of pleasing God, thinking of them as bhakti towards God. Moreover, even of the bhakti that he does offer to God, he does so only when it is nourished it nourishes his pride, but not for the sole purpose of pleasing God. There must be there must be f very few devotees of the likes of Ratanji and Miyaji who offer bhakti to God solely for the purpose of pleasing God without any cravings for praise. Not everyone, however, is capable of forsaking the taste of praise. In reference to this, Muktan Swami recited a couplet by Tulsidas. Hearing this couplet, Sri Maharaj added, The enjoyment which one experiences from vanity cannot be obtained from any other object. Thus, amongst all devotees, a person who forsakes vanity and worships God should be known to be an extremely great devotee. Extremely great devotee. So, in this Vachnamra, Bhagwan Swami Narayan, in this first paragraph, states uh, exactly the subject of uh, today's uh, Sabha, which is how to perform the Seva of Maharaj, Santo, and Bhakto. That's what we want to cover. But the remaining Vachnamra focuses on ego, and one should not do anything uh, to uh, fuel one's ego, but one should do it to please Bhagwan, his santo, and bhakto. And the person who performs it, uh, seva in this very technique, in this very way, should be considered to be an extremely great Hari Bhagat. So let's move on to how now Swami analyzes the five, uh, the five uh, exact uh, statements in this Vachnamra. Pujya Swami, uh, he narrates in a longer fashion that we want to cover right now. The soul does not like to do bhakti. Consider it as seva in this text, meaning Maharaj uses the word bhakti. And Pujya Swami, analyzing the Vachnamrut in depth, bhakti is considered to be seva, meaning bhakti, its definition is devotion towards God affection for God but when taken in text to okay bhakti for Maharaj bhakti for Santo and Bhakto it doesn't only refer to a standard of having affection for them it also refers to as seva or service how so whoever you have affection for automatically whatever they ask you to do you'll do so that's considered to be seva so in this context, the, the statement that says that this soul does not like to do bhakti without receiving ego, bhakti should be considered to be seva in this very context. Now, reading on into the paragraph, the first paragraph of that Vachnamrut, when a person who wishes to worship God receives an opportunity to serve God and his devotees, number one, he should serve them considering it to be his extremely great fortune. Now, Bhujiswami took various practical examples here of Hari Bhakto, and uh, he explained this matter in that way. But for this topic, for all of you to understand, um, if we win the lottery, we are considered to be our extremely great fortune. If we get something that we really, really wanted that no one else got, we would consider it to be our great fortune. Anything and everything that someone else does not get or it makes you a little more higher, we've, the, the human mind thinks of it as it's my great fortune. For this Vachnamrut, how should we take it in text? Well, the service of Maharaj, Guruji, Santo and Bhakto that should be considered as a great fortune. For example, suppose we come to Mandir and after Sabha and everything, um, we have this uh, seva of serving, 
हरी भक्तो नाउ देर इज यू एज वेल एज योर अदर कंपेनियन हरी भगत फ्रेंड दैट इज ऑल्सो सर्विंग नाउ वट हैपन्स इज दैट सपोज यू कीप सर्विंग इन सर्विंग एंड यू डोंट गेट अ चांस टू टेक प्रसाद बिकॉज देर आर सो मेनी भक्तोज इट्स जस्ट फ्लडिंग इन एंड यू कीप सर्विंग इन सर्विंग एंड द फूड इज अबाउट टू रन आउट नाउ वट हैपन्स योर कंपेनियन हरी भगत फ्रेंड ही इज लाइक ओके फूड इज रनिंग आउट आई गैट ईट सो वट ही डज एज ही स्टैंड इन लाइन नाउ यू हैव अ चांस टू सर्व दैट हरी भगत even if you don't get to eat but what process should you or what thought process should you have while doing that it's my extremely great fortune not to take the last remaining food but to serve the last remaining food to my friend who will eat i can eat anything i can go home and eat i can even eat a couple of apples or fruits and that should do but it's my great fortune that i get to serve my friend the last food available for today's assembly and and i can suffice on something else if one thinks in this way then one is doing seva in a correct fashion or in a correct or proper technique but if on the other hand you know that your friend is hungry you're also extremely hungry and you know that okay the food is running out your friend doesn't know that that the food is running out so instead what do you do you stand in line and you're like okay let me go eat uh who cares about anyone else that is not service that is not cons- that's more of a selfish motive but service is letting go of one's own you can say self and also understanding it to be one's own ex- extreme fortune that it's okay i don't get to eat but at least my friend got to take prasad and it's my great fortune that i got to serve him if one thinks in that process then one is one is, bhagwan one will receive bhagwan's rajipo faster and guruji and santo and bhaktos rajipo faster inside of this statement swami has a couple of points that he uh, elaborated on he took the vachanamrit gadada middle chapter 59 upon reading this statement and he said in the vachanamrut states that furthermore only those who have accumulated a great number of merits from performing good deeds receive the opportunity to serve god's sant but those who have few merits do not so when one attains god or his sant then apart from this there is no other liberation for the jeev this itself is ultimate liberation <clears throat> I also want to specify that service does not only have to mean or title physical seva meaning mopping sweeping serving that's that's considered very good seva but seva is whatever the great sant likes seva is whatever santos have instructed you to do suppose you have computer seva that's also considered seva suppose you have the seva of typing something up suppose you have the seva of teaching others about satsang suppose you have the seva of changing bhagwan's vaka it only does not go with a physical restraint but there is many aspects to seva anything that's connected with bhagwan his santo bhakto could be considered to be seva it's not it does not only go with serving others but that's what everyone considers or looks at is that seva is this particular uh, activity of if i serve water to everyone then i have done seva but if i say no to santo saying that if santo say oh, oh bhagat i need you to type this up you say no swami i don't have time it doesn't work like that seva can be anything that is connected with maharaj guruji santo and bhakto in satsang related activities that's all considered to be seva maharaj is saying in this vachanamrut gadada middle chapter 59 that one should think that it's my great merit that i have received 
the opportunity to serve God's son. But those who have few merits do not. Think about it. Those who are outside even of this church, Mandir, outside of our Mandir, this street, they do not get to even have the darshan of Bhagwan. But if we can say, they don't get to serve santos or bhaktos on a personal basis. They don't get to come in this mandir and get to vacuum the floor. Because they don't have enough credit. They don't have enough merits. Just like how a credit card can be loaded with $100, $5,000, $10,000, $50,000. Well, in the same way, that person's credit card is only loaded with $100. So there is no way that person can buy something for $5,000. It's just not possible. Here in satsang, those who receive seva of Santo Bhakto Maharaj on a daily basis, we should understand and consider them to be very, very great souls because their credit balance is very, very high. They have many merits from the past. Due to that, they're able to serve Maharaj Guruji Santo and Bhakto. Right now, even taking a live example, Puja Guruji came here for about uh, three months and he did the Katha on Shikshapatri Bhashya. And here, Puja Gnan Swami, he had the seva of typing Puja Guruji's Katha completely from the beginning to the end, adding references, adding different stories, whatever Guruji wanted. Now, Puja Swami may not have closely served Puja Guruji by serving him physically or doing some physical seva we can see uh, sweeping or mopping or vacuuming. But he did the seva of typing Puja Guruji's Katha, preparing it, uh, double checking that there is no errors. That's considered to be a seva directly. In the same way, those who have great merits can only have the seva of a great Satpurush. Those who have great merits from the past can have the seva of Maharaj. Those who have great merits from the past can have seva of Santos and Bhaktos. So this was just one example, but just to give you a perspective that it's not only a physical uh, element, it, it has many, many angles to it. Moving on. Point B. If you get seva and you feel it is a burden more than your fortune, then you will not get the merits of doing the seva and you will have a hard time completing the seva as well. Sometimes seva can be overwhelming. There can be many tasks put on oneself uh, in a multiple series at maybe even a, a same period of time. Now, the tendency of the human mind tends to balance a couple certain things, multiple things out, but when it gets too much, then there is an overload. There, it, One's uh, mindset starts to break down and say, how am I going to finish? running out of time, all these different thoughts come in our mind. But even if these thoughts come in our mind, we should understand how much ever I can do, I'll do. But it's my great fortune that I am getting this seva because those people of the outside world, they don't have any, they don't have any seva of Maharaj Guruji Santon Bhakto, but I do. So it's my great fortune. Now suppose one thing becomes late, no problem, that's fine, it will become late. But if one feels like a burden, one feels there's weight on oneself, then that seva will not equal seva and one's mind will become disturbed. And due to that, the fruits or the exact effects of that seva that should be done on one's soul will not happen. What do I mean by certain effects? Well. Ukar was a, a, a Hari Bhagat of Bhagwan Swami Narayan who completely had an addiction of doing seva of 
Maharaj Guru, uh, Maharaj and Santo and Bhakto all day long. He would do it constantly. But inside that Vachanamud, Gadara Middle Chapter 25, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that he had an addiction and he could not live without it. But the level that he was doing the seva, there was no kind of competition. There was no kind of jealousy, no kind of other swabhaos that were ingrained with doing that seva. That seva that Ukakachar did was him believing himself that it's my great fortune and he did it. Due to that, in that Vachnamrut Bhagwan Swamiran explains what happened or what happens when one performs seva like this. Well, one's desires, one's vasna that has been attached to the soul for innumerable time is burned away. Now, going back to our point here, the effects that it should be done on our soul, meaning if we have a burden and we feel like, oh man, it's only me, I have to do this, and it's just a big weight, then one has not understood it to be one's great fortune. Due to that, that vasna that is covering our soul cannot be broken because one does not have the proper technique to perform that seva. But if one considered it to be our great one's great fortune, then that effect would be activated and vasna would be slowly start to peel away from our soul. That's the very reason that you need technique. We can't just do it without uh, thinking about it or, and just do it like a crazy person, like I'll vacuum the floor and I'll, I'll sweep the floor and uh, you know, I'll do kathas in this form of a seva and I'll do this and that without any kind of technique because then it just increases one's swabhav. It does not break one's swabhav. It does not break that vasna that has been accumulated for innumerable time. That's why Puja Swami took this subject that it's good to do something, but it's better to do it with a proper technique. Just like how in business there is a saying that quant it's not about the quality or quantity, it's about the quality. Meaning here in this particular subject of seva, it's not about how much you do but it's about how you do it. And in this point B, one can understand that if one has burden, then it's not going to affect our soul. It's not going to help us out progress uh, in the fashion of uh, going towards Bhagwan. Moving on to point C. Whoever has an account of doing seva should understand it to be their great fortune. Do not look at others what they're doing. This is something that is also... Um, Something that it's difficult because obviously everyone has eyes, everyone can see. But whatever seva one has, suppose I have the seva of cleaning the toilets and another sant has the seva of typing. Now, cleaning toilets in the world, what does it look like? Look at how this is disgusting. I mean, that's not something that's great to do in the world what does typing look like yeah this is this is good this is a good seva to do this is easy nice no uh, no physical labor but we're not trying to look at what the world's perspective is we're trying to understand bhagwan swami Narayan and his satpurush's perspective that is what satsang is for and in this context Suppose one person is cleaning the toilets and the other person is typing. As long as both of them consider it to be their great fortune, that seva is equivalent to one another. But suppose that the person who is cleaning the toilet, that person says, it's my great fortune and believes it, truly. But the person who is typing feels that it's not my fortune, it, my great fortune. It just, that's it, it's just something to type and done then the fruits will not be received by that person. So if both consider it, it's both the same in this context. Point D. Sometimes 
whatever inclination we have, inclination meaning inclination of doing seva, inclination of doing bhajan, inclination of doing bhakti, inclination of reading scriptures, Maharaj has given us, whatever uh, inclination Maharaj has given us, we accept it to be in others. But that's not possible. You know, sometimes we think that if I have the inclination of seva, if I like to do seva, then this person should also do seva. Why isn't this person doing seva? If I like doing bhakti, meaning suppose I like doing pradakshina of Bhagwan, and you see all the other bhaktos, they don't do pradakshina, then you, you feel like, why isn't he doing pradakshina? He should also be doing it. It doesn't work like that. If everyone's fingerprint is not the same, if everyone's retina I, is not the same, then how can one's inclination be the same? Whoever has whatever inclination that Bhagwan has given them, they are completely and perfectly suitable for that inclination. Bhagwan has designed them in that particular way. The end goal is to reach Bhagwan, no matter if you do A, B, C, or D, or E. does not matter. The end goal is to reach Bhagwan. So that's why Puja Swami emphasized on this particular topic that one should not think that, oh, why, should, why isn't this person have this inclination just like I do? It doesn't work like that. E. Perform seva happily without taking the bow and augun of anyone. Meaning, if you are doing seva and you see someone sitting around, then you should not think that, look at him, how lazy he is. He comes in Mandir, eats, <clears throat> eats uh, at least uh, for two hours and then does not do anything. Is this what satsang is about? Then whatever seva you're doing, that also washes away and you also develop an abhav for that person. So whenever you look at the person, you feel that he's lazy. So even if one does seva, one should only look at oneself and not take the abawa or gun of anyone. And what is the antidote for that? One has to think that that person has already done it in the past lives. Due to that, he does not need to do seva in this life. But I have to do a lot in this life in order to please Maharaj, Guruji, Santu, and Bhakto. So that's why Maharaj has given me this seva. And that's why Maharaj has given him that seva of sitting. That's it. That's the antidote that Swami gave. Point F. Whoever receives a small seva, may it be sweeping, taking out the garbage, cleaning, uh, cleaning the toilet, uh, anything and everything, small seva, should understand it to be their great fortune. Sometimes we feel that those who are sitting on the computers those who are running the audio mixer, those who are doing um, accounting, those who are doing some kind of uh, business affairs, those who are doing some kind of social affairs in the town, talking to the mayor, etc., so on and so forth. That is very great, Siva. And compared to that, taking out the garbage, cleaning the toilets, that is very low seva. But that's because we have not understood the perspective of Sriji Maharaj. That's because we have not understood the perspective of the Aryakantik Satpurush, our Puja Guruji. One time, I think it was not this Sabha, but the Sabha before, uh, U.S. Sabha 5, Puja Niskam Swami gave an example of how during the nighttime, maybe 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., uh, he was sleeping um, in Kandari Gurukul in India and he got up to uh, go to the bathroom and he went in the bathrooms and he was just standing there because he heard someone maybe he, he knew that someone was there he was waiting for them to get out so he can go in and when the when the son got out it was Puja Guruji himself and Swami inquired he asked what are you doing Puja Guruji you know what are you doing right now don't you want to rest Puja Guruji said that <coughs> I'm just cleaning the toilets of, you know, the santos. You guys will not let me do it during the day. So I do it during the evening. 
at the night time I hide into it because it's my great fortune to do the seva of santo. Now think about it. Puja Guruji has numerous institutions, 60 well-equipped, very skilled, highly educated santo, thousands of haribhaktos, and yet he's doing a very, very small seva, but considering it to be very great. So when we come in mandir, when we look at others doing other seva, we should consider it that it's their great fortune. And when we get to do the seva of sweeping, cleaning the toilets, taking out the garbage, we should consider it to be our great fortune. If we, do, if we look in this way, then Bhagwan will become happy upon us. Point G. Bharavad Bhai state in Maharaj's murti constantly. Puja uh, Swami gave an example. But when it came time to serve Dada Khachar's servant, he was the first one to volunteer in the assembly with great enthusiasm. Maharaj said, who will serve, Bhai's, uh, who will serve Dada Khachar's servant who is very sick? Bharat Bhai raised his hand first and he said, I will, Maharaj, please give me the seva. So Bharat Bhai was constantly engrossed in Maharaj's murti, yet he considered also his extreme fortune to serve not a Hari Bhagat, but a, 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 a servant of a Hari Bhagat. So this is the understanding that one should possess. And finally, point, point H. Puja Guruji once said in a, in a Pravachan that it would be my great fortune to clean the dishes of these Hari Bhaktos. Meaning there was this festival that was going on and Puja Guruji had a Pravachan to do. And in the Pravachan, Puja Guruji said that it would be my great fortune to clean the dishes of these Haribhaktos. Dishes that they have eaten from. Now, being such an Ekantik Satpurush, from the previous characteristics I gave you, from the world, not from his Kalyankari, his redemptive virtues, I did not give you any examples of his redemptive virtues. I gave you examples of his worldly virtues, his worldly achievements. Yet, <clears throat> considering that, he himself said in a pravachan, not worrying about if others will look at him as a lower person or if others will see him that how could he be in such a high position and say this, she should have more sense. Not looking if others would criticize, but looking at how Bhagwan would criticize. Looking at how Bhagwan would become happy. That's how he considered it. And due to that, he was able to do he was able to say this very statement. But nonetheless, before when he was before when he didn't have as many institutions or santos, he also did seva, just like this of Hari Bhaktos, clean their dishes. He, uh, our Yogi Sharampariya, who is a doctor in Florida, he, uh, he was sick, and Puja Guruji himself massaged his head, gave him medicine. All these things Puja Guruji did in that time. If we look at it, then we can understand the true servant of servants, the true Dasna Das, is our Puja Guruji, who is, may look like he's sitting on a sofa, but in reality, in his heart, in his perspective, he, is cons uh, he, he himself consider considers it to be his great fortune to do seva of others. Point two, number two, in the Vachnamrut, one should do seva for the sake of pleasing God. Now point A inside, we want to do seva for pleasing God, but we also want some kind of praise, Puja Swami said. And this is this goes for everyone who is still in sadhan dasa or who is still going on the path uh, to Bhagavan Swami Narayan. It's not for those who are enlightened, but some kind of thought remains that, oh, did someone see what I just did? Oh, Someone should really remark what I just said, uh, what I just did. Small thoughts like this occur, 
But if one learns to kind of fold them and put them away and kind of remove them from our head that, no, no, even if I did this, that I am just, it, even if I did this seva, it's only for pleasing Maharaj. If someone looks or if someone does not look, if someone says or someone does not say, that's not a problem. But Bhagwan is looking. That's the main thing. And point B, when a Satpurush is Raji upon someone, he may praise him and he may also speak harsh words to him. But one should understand both of these to be a form of Rajipo. You know, the Satpurush's Rajipo is very rare to receive. Because there's many, many things that one has to let go, especially our Sobhaos, in order to attain his Rajipo. There's many, many things that we have to let go of in order to even get a couple of percent of Rajipo of the Satpurush. Due to that, we have to understand that <clears throat> the Satpurush is a very rare element in our life. And at times he may praise us. At times he may, you know, even say harsh words to us. But we should understand that he is Raji upon us. <clears throat> Point three, we should do Seva for our own liberation. Our own liberation right now obviously is guaranteed. We have received Maharaj, Puja Guruji, Santo and Bhakto. But now we should do Seva so we develop more and more affection for Maharaj. That should be our goal. Our liberation is done. There is nothing else now to do. When we leave this body, our soul is going to Akshardham. That's a guarantee. As long as one has that firm uh, belief in one's mind. But now what we have to do is we have to get more and more closer to Maharaj. We have to attach our soul more and more to Maharaj's murti. We have to get closer and closer to Maharaj. And that is what we have to do by performing seva of others. If we perform seva of, other, uh, of a Hari Bhagat who has affection for Maharaj, and we take his quality, we should also incline that I also want to develop this kind of affection for Maharaj as well. Moving on. Point four. Moreover, he should not he should do it so with bhakti. So one should do seva with bhakti. Now, what is bhakti considered in this context? Puja Swami elaborates. There are three parts. One is priti, two is anuvrutti, and three is nirdos buddhi. When one does seva, one should do it with priti, meaning with great affection, not feeling burden. Number two, one would should do it with anuvrutti. Anuvrutti meaning, what does the great sant want from me? What does he like? And number three, one should do it with nirdos buddhi. Santo do, does, do not want anything from us, but just want to see us progress and benefit. So we should do it in that fashion. And number five, the final point. We should not do any seva for receiving praise from others. Something which is very, very hard to stop the thought of. But one can definitely stop it. One can definitely divert. If one believes that I am very inferior and all of these bhaktos are superior to me. I am very, very small. But compared to myself, all of these bhaktos are very great. If one has this understanding and then performs seva, then there is no way that one would think that someone should praise me. Why? Because you know you're nothing. You know that you are nothing. Then who would praise you? Who would even look at you? Who would even consider you, consider you in a seva? Completely to melt oneself, in short. So if one believes that I am very low and everyone else is very high, great, with many, many virtues, then this thought would not occur of someone giving praise to us or we expecting some kind of praise from others. So 
from this U.S. Sabha 6, Pujya Swami covered this very paragraph, the first paragraph in Gadada, middle chapter 41st. And we covered each points. There are a total of five points and elaborated. So this is how one should perform seva. And if one, one performs it with these five steps, then there's a guaranteed chance. Or sorry, there's a guaranteed it's guaranteed that that vasna which is wrapped around our soul will be destroyed surely but surely but slowly and we would reach bhagwan murti in a very very quick pace saying this my humble jay swaminarayan